Hey everyone, John Reed here from Learn to Stargaze and author of 50 Things to See with a Telescope. Now it's December 28th, 2020, and I hope everyone's having a safe and happy holiday season. Now I know that many of you received a new telescope this month, and now you're looking for things to see, and I can help you with that. This is Learn to Stargaze. Now this video is a follow-up video to my last astronomy challenge video where we looked at three objects to see with binoculars in the winter sky. To recap, these were the Pleiades, the Hades, and the Orion Nebula, found here, here, and here. And remember, these are perfect targets for telescopes too, especially the Orion Nebula. Now before attempting to see these objects in your telescope, I want to confirm that you've mastered the use of your telescope, and that you have full confidence that you'll be able to find an object given the easy to use star maps that I'm about to show you. If you have any doubts about your ability to use your telescope to see things in space, please, please, please stop now and go watch astronomy challenge number 22, how to use a beginner telescope. Now on to the winter targets for telescopes, although yes, technically these could be observed with binoculars too. Anyway, as practice for finding these targets, I want you to try finding two bright stars just to test your gear. First, check out the bright red star Betelgeuse, found here above Orion's belt. It should look something like this through your telescope. Second, check out the bright blue-white star Rigel, found here below Orion's belt. Have you found these without issues? Great! Let's move on to our three main targets. Our main targets include two open clusters and one supernova remnant. So the first target we're going to find in the winter sky is an open star cluster called M35. It looks like this through your telescope. Now, if you remember M42 from our video about binocular targets, M42 was a star forming nebula. Now fast forward a few million years, just enough time for the gas to turn into stars and planets, and you have an open cluster. Now open clusters don't last forever either. Eventually the stars in the cluster get perturbed by the gravitational influence of our galaxy, and they disperse and go along their merry way around and round our galaxy every quarter billion years or so. Anyway, to find M35, you're going to start using just your eyes with Orion's belt. Look up past Betelgeuse. If you've hit these two stars, Pollux and Castor, you've gone too far. Okay, now that you're oriented, you're going to take a close look at the feet and the twins that make up the constellation Gemini. Then you're going to follow an imaginary line, like this, to the location of this cluster, which you can only see without a telescope in very, very dark skies. Now moving over to your finder scope, if you're using a finder scope, point your telescope as close you can to this spot, and through your finder scope you should be able to make out the cluster. Center the cluster in the finder, then move to the eyepiece for a close-up view. Remember to use your lowest power eyepiece, that's the one with the highest focal length, providing the lowest magnification. If you're using a red dot finder, or Telrad, or other finder with a built-in bullseye, you need to point your telescope exactly at this part of the sky, even though you can't see your cluster in the finder. Then move to the eyepiece for the close-up view. Did you find it? Great! Now take a closer look. If you have really keen eyes, you should be able to make out an additional target, a very tight open cluster called NGC 2158. Now moving on to target number two, which is called, well, M1. Through your telescope, it will look something like this. Yes, a little smudge, or as astronomers call it, a beautiful smudge. M1 is a supernova remnant. A supernova occurs when a large star explodes. The supernova event that created M1 was observed by Chinese astronomers in the year 1054. If we look at an image of this nebula from my school's telescope, it looks like this. And you can sort of see how it got its name, the Crab Nebula, due to its sort of twisty arms. To find M1, start at Orion's belt, then look over to the bright star Aldebaran in Taurus. Picture this constellation as shown. Then follow an imaginary line up the bull's horn to the star here. M1 will be found near this star. Now depending on the light pollution from your area, you might not be able to make this nebula out in your finder scope. But at least use this star to get the scope pointed in approximately the right location, then use the telescope to look for that beautiful smudge. Moving on to our third target, another open cluster called M41. Through a telescope, it should look something like this. This is in the constellation Canis Major. To find M41, start again with Orion's belt, then move down to the brightest star in the sky, Sirius. 
Use your imagination to form the body of the great dog, which shouldn't be too hard because this constellation really does look like a dog. And 41 is found right here in the body of the dog. If you're using a finder scope, you should be able to make out this cluster in the finder itself. So center the target and move to the eyepiece for a closer look. If you're using a red dot or bullseye finder, again, make sure your telescope is pointed at exactly this point in the sky before moving to your eyepiece for a closer look. Did you find it? Great, be sure to document your progress to keep a record of your accomplishment. Now that you're in the area, I'm gonna introduce you to a bonus target that's not included in the astronomy workbook. This is one of my favorite winter targets, but I admit it's a bit challenging. This is a double star nicknamed Winter Alberio or Canis Major 145. To find this beautiful double star, form a triangle off the dog's back to this part of the sky here. Use your finder to make sure the telescope is pointed at exactly the right spot then move to your eyepiece and look for this beauty. If your telescope wasn't pointed at exactly the right spot, that's okay, but you may need to pan around just a bit. And with a bit of searching, you should be able to find this gem. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider subscribing. And if you're following along in the 50 things to see with the telescope activity workbook, again, these targets were found on page 34. Anyway, that's it for today. I hope you're enjoying your new telescope and remember the future is looking up.